each cruise ship has its own mix of the familiar and the unexpected. Whether you are a seasoned passenger or new to cruising, there are issues that don't get covered in the glossy brochures or the videos that the fleets produce. In this video, we focus on the Fred Olsen Cruise Line ship Balmoral. It's a mid-sized ship with 710 cabins and 11 decks. It's small enough to venture into a number of the smaller ports and fjords, which are part of its normal circuit. Even though it's a mid-sized ship, getting comfortable with its layout takes a bit of effort, and this overview starts with some of the key points on the model of the ship that happens to be in the main public space. Let's start at the bow. When approaching port and getting ready for departure, the bow and its crew become a hive of activity. This is also the locations of the ship's rib boats and the gangplank and the cranes that operate them. The public forward deck connects the port and starboard promenades for those who like to exercise as well as those who have their cameras out for sighting birds, whales, and glaciers. Or the Balmoral's rather limited space. Sometimes you can get around, but sometimes the guys with the big lenses, well, it's really hard to get past them. Slightly back, the forward portions of the promenade on the port and starward are often sheltered from the wind if the forward deck is uncomfortable. These parts of the prom promenade are adjacent to the main lounge, which can accommodate most of the passengers. It's the place where you'll go for safety sessions, talks, and evening entertainment. Moving up, on the top deck is an observation lounge, which is rather good for seeing the sunset out of the wind. Of course, some people are doing their knitting there. Most ships offer a promenade. The lounge deck on the Balmoral provides this, and depending on the weather, it hosts walkers, folk watching the world pass by. Some views are restricted by the ship's launches, so well worth finding your preferred location. Moving to midship, the upper deck provides areas which are well sheltered from the wind and also areas under cover. The upper pool is flanked by ranks of loungers, so it's possible to get some sun even in windy conditions. The midship promenade will collect scores of folk catching the sun and watching the passing walkers. Under the launches, the promenade's often well sheltered, although the views might be restricted. And above the promenade on the Balmoral, these are the decks with cabins with balconies. Of course, if you're located on the port side, you'll not be able to catch starboard events, so plan ahead as to where you want to head. Go to the upper deck or down to the promenade. The stern is the most sheltered place from the wind. The Malmoral has several levels that you might choose from. The pool area is adjacent to the aft rail for views. Better views might be had on the small aft-decked areas on the Lido, Bridge, and Highland decks. There are curved stairs between all of these decks. If you're quick, you can grab a small table and chairs for getting through another chapter or another pint. Going back down to the pool area, on each side, slightly forward, are glassed-in sections which provide additional protection from the wind. And lastly, Moving back up to the top deck aft, to each side of the funnel are prime viewing areas. It's very easy to change sides, and depending on where you're standing, you can get a good view in almost any direction. Figure out your preferred locations, so that when the loudspeaker announces a sighting, you know where to head. The Balmoral just fits under many bridges. It's quite popular to join in on a bridge transit. Here's one in Norway. Notice that the mask has been partly lowered to allow it to fit under the bridge.
Up to this point, you've seen isolated images. Let's join these together by taking an internal tour, starting from a cabin and working our way through the public spaces. It's about 5.30 in the morning. I know something nice is outside, but nobody else is up yet, so we can just walk. There's a couple of shops, the main reception, and some seating. This is the lounge deck, more shops, the model of the ship, We'll see more of the public spaces later. Let's head out onto the promenade deck and turn toward the bow of the vessel. Looks like a few early birds have gotten to that bow viewing area before I did. <laughs> Here's that forward working area with the rib boats and their lifters. a standard running rate of about 16 knot max. Probably we're doing 14. The chairs are all set out for when it warms up. The ship is nearly 220 meters long, so we've got a ways to go.
we're coming to that sheltered area each side of the pool and there's a buffet area very close by great place for breakfast one of my favorite spots is the aft rail And here are the ranks of aft decks stretching up to the top. Let's move up from the lounge deck. Staff are setting up for breakfast. This seating area was actually our favorite breakfast location. Well sheltered. This could be a very nicely sheltered spot, but it's very popular. Slightly better views, but there's no way to get from the port to the starboard here. A very popular eating area and also quite easy to get from port to starboard if you need to make a transit. And now for the wide open spaces of the marquee deck. Some parts of it are very exposed but there are pockets where you can get good shelter. This is one of the best forward viewing positions on the ship. As mentioned earlier, the glass shields on each side of this part of the upper deck do provide quite a bit of protection from the wind. And this seating area is very well protected from the wind and from rain and it's very close to a bar.
And this is the observatory. It kind of does what it says on the tin. And now it's time to descend the staircase to the lower levels. Let's return to the promenade deck. It's a bit later, so that front viewing area is beginning to be populated. Time to end this tour. Wow, a big round shiny thing. 